So it's Saturday morning and there is nobody at the castle today. So I'm going there and I want to make one simple experiment. I want to take one small problem and solve it during this day. And I want to also document it. I want to make a video, edit it and upload today. Some time ago I received email from customer. He has a Zen clock and the rubber legs, what we use on the Zen clock, leave stains on his furniture, on the desk where he plays the Zen clock. I tried to reproduce this problem in our workshop. I placed the legs on several surfaces, but I was not able to make this work. It always didn't leave any, any stains. Recently we bought a new table for the electronic slab and uh, this has slightly different surface than our normal working tables and I noticed that the legs would we use actually leave some stains on it. So I first tried cleaning of the legs and try to heat it up to maybe finish the reaction in the rubber because maybe it's not finished and it uh, evaporates the chemicals from the rubber. But it didn't work, it still can leave the stains on the, on the desk. I also contacted the manufacturer of these legs of the rubber and uh, they didn't have any interest in solving this problem. They rather tried to offer us another product what they make with the same rubber, which doesn't really make sense. So instead of purchasing the rubber legs from external suppliers, I want to try to make it on our 3D printer and maybe we can manufacture them ourselves and have full control over it. Another task for today will be this. A customer is coming in one or two hours to collect the clock. The columns are not blinking like this. It's because of the camera and the shutter speed. Let's have a look on the stains, what I was talking about, the stains from our current, current legs. It's this, it's this. These stains are made by the current rubber feet. It's not really, not really good. Maybe it's only on rough wood. This is untreated wood or some maybe, oh yeah, it looks like a wood. This is the problematic part. It's a, uh, rubber leg it's used for for our clocks they they actually sit on it so when you have the clock this is a base of a pure clock so the clock rests rests on these feet like this here you can see i was searching for some replacement of this part but uh, i couldn't find anything uh, the other legs were always bigger or made of the same material. We can actually have no control over the rubber, so this is a bit problematic. One material which is really good would be a silicon, silicon rubber, but uh, this always come like this with the glue and I don't want to use glue because the, the feet in this case can easily slip away and in few years it would not hold well on it so I, I, so I just want to stick to a rubber with screw in it it's much more durable than than a glue so I got this idea instead of purchasing the legs from the supplier we will make them ourselves from a flexible filament I actually did some experiments yesterday with the printing and it went quite well but there are some problems uh, as you can see the we have to disable the retraction of the filament. When the printing head crosses the perimeters, it cannot retract the filament in. So there is this, this residues, this oozing from the, from the filament. So 
I will try to find a solution for this. So this is the normal filament, quite hard and not very good for, for printing something like legs. And here we have the flexible filament, you can see it's much, much more flexible. So this would be pretty good, it, it has roughly the same hardness like this rubber. So if we manage to print the legs from this filament, we can easily replace our current rubber rubber legs. And here it starts to be really, really messy, so don't be scared. I will clean it one day, but step by step. So this needs to wait a while. And now I want to make the 3D model. The reason for the chamfer on the bottom is because of the of the first layer on the printer. It's always a little bit wider than the others, so then it looks like it's like extending from the perimeter. So it doesn't look nice. With this chamfer on the bottom, it will look much better. So we use we use Prusa slicer for slicing the three models for 3D printer. Uh, we have Prusa MK3 printer, it's, it's a very good printer. And um, the only things what we will change here is infill set to 8%. Uh, here filament, you can find a predefined semi-flex or flex fill filament here in this menu. Top fill pattern, concentric, concentric. We want to be, we want the layers to be like this, not like this it would not be nice so let's let's choose concentric fill pattern filament settings okay there are no changes and printer settings the only change here is the retraction uh, the retraction is when the filament is pulled inside the extruder head before it moves to another place because this suppress the oozing of the filament but here we need to go down. Normally here is 0.8. Uh, this is for PLA, but we need to use very low values because if you use too high value of retraction, uh, the filament will eventually stuck in the in the head, in the printing head, in the extruder. So let's try. Yesterday I tried 0.1. That worked. Let's let's try 0.2. Maybe it will reduce the oozing. So for normal prints from PLA or ABS or some other normal plastics, you don't need to apply any layer on this, on this bed. It just sticks to it and it prints very well. It's very comfortable. But for flex, you need to apply a glue stick. Yeah, you need to apply a glue stick on the bed because the rubber sticks to the surface of the of the bed very firmly and it's very difficult to remove it. You will, you could damage the surface of the bed and you can damage also the, the print itself. So we need to, we need to apply the glue. I actually did, did, did this yesterday. You can see the glue on it. Looks quite messy, but, but works well. So the first print was finished, it looks very good, but there is still this, there are still these strings between. I will try to increase the retraction value for the extruder and hopefully it will solve this problem. 
I'm trying to find a way how to reduce the stringing on the prints and one of the advices I found on the website is to reduce the temperature. Uh, at the moment we use 240 degrees because we use the settings in Prusa Slicer for filament flex fill 98A. And, uh, but, we, but we actually doesn't use this filament, we use slightly different filament, it's called Fiberflex 30D and the temperature recommended for the extruder is between 200 and 220 C, so this might be the reason for such a significant stringing on the prints. So we'll already use the temperature 220 and we'll see the difference. Okay, so it looks good. Now we have some time before it finishes, maybe like 30 minutes. So I want to show you some other things here and also I want to start, I want to also start a cleaning process for our pumping machine because it needs to be clean from time to time. And the weekend is the best time because there are no other people who need this machine. I know this room from the video. This is the this is the nicest thing here. This is the best thing in this room, this tester. Now the machine has user interface made in browser, it's very comfortable. Okay, very fast start, it can go very fast to 10 to minus 5 and it will take many many hours to reach 10 to minus 7 okay good one of the ghosts which i have here is the getter cutter machine yeah the problem is that when i clean it it works it works perfectly i can i can operate it but i need to get to make it ready for others to operate it. I want to delegate this work to others. Here is a control panel which we will mount here and next week I should have a polycarbonate case for this machine so that it's safe to operate. It will only cut, it will only operate when, when the machine is on so nobody can stick fingers in it. I have quite often children here so I have to make it really safe and it's always better when it is safe. Good! Of course the the cover will be operated by a air cylinder up and down like this. Yeah, I hope to make it this month Okay, so the second attempt with lower temperature is finished. It looks better, it looks better, but let's take it to better light, we will see. So here is the difference between first and second attempt. This is the first attempt, you can see a lot of stringing, a lot of strings on the print. And here it's much less, it's much easier to remove it. So this is the best result what I got today, very uniform print, very uniform walls.
In this weather I have no regrets to be at work during the weekend. The summer seems to be over, rainy weather is here. So as a conclusion I have two puricle cases with the new legs made out of the uh, flexible filament and I will now observe them for two weeks maybe and we will see whether they leave the stains on the table or not because the previous legs made of regular rubber they left the stains. Uh, I searched for information about the composition of this flexible filament. It's made of thermoplastics. The previous legs are made of Bunaen rubber and this rubber is made by vulcanization process. There are additional chemicals added during the manufacture of the of the rubber and I think the problem might be caused by these chemicals. Maybe there are too much of them. We will see anyway. These thermoplastics should not contain the chemical and they should not release any chemicals to the to the table so we will see so it's 5 pm and i need to finish this video today it's as i as i mentioned at the beginning it's a, it's an experiment it's really raw video unfiltered and i'm not sure if this is what i want to make in the future because i'm showing all the mess and all these things which i'm really uncomfortable with like showing this is really not not nice but uh, it's it's like with the 3d prints today i today i made 15 revisions i always made one saw the problems and tuned them for the next print and it, it went better and better and with the videos it's the same i just need to keep making them even if they are so imperfect i see all the problems all the imperfections but I just, just need to make one by one and make better and better with each video. So, yeah, I hope you liked it and about the unfiltered information and uh, raw videos. My intention with this YouTube channel is to make authentic story, authentic documentary about my work with the Nixie tubes. So I want to show everything as it is. I don't want to pretend that things are better than they actually are. And uh, I think this, like this mess in the workshop and all these like failures and uh, maybe a pr problems with the product, it all makes the story. It's all part of what I do. Like I don't want to pretend that everything what we make is perfect, even if it is, um, maybe if, if, if it damage our image at the customers. I just want to present it, present it as it is and show you the progress and showing how we master the product, how we make it with time better and better. Okay, so that's all for today and see you at the next video.